Good morning, wherever you are watching us from. If you are watching us from the diaspora, we say good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to another delay edition of Inside of Print Media. For today, today is July 20, 2023, and today is twice day. Um, I don't know your geographical location, but if you are within Liberia, um, you notice that we are facing um, a climate change as it relates to our weather. And certain area of our country is so wet right now. Certain places are cold right now as well. So wherever you are watching us from, I'm saying good morning, good evening, good afternoon to you. And welcome to Focal Online TV, where we bring innovation to broadcasting. So for today, we're going to be taking a look and a review at our news for today. So we have the Ferris newspaper here in studio. We have the Data Observer newspaper. We have the New Down newspaper here in studio. We have the Front Page Africa here in studio. And then we also have our uh, international news for today. We have our sources, ABC, CNN, and BBC. So stay with me. I'm your presenter on the daily edition of Inside the Print Media, and I'm here being co-assisted by my co-presenter. Mohamed Fani Kanin is my co-presenter for today. Delay edition of Inside of Print Media. Don't forget, today is Thursday, July 20, 2023. Whatever you are doing, keep pushing forward. There is always a light at the end of the tunnel. Do not forget, whatever you are doing, keep pushing forward because there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. We will be right back shortly with the headlines and the news in details. Thanks for watching. Stay with me. I love you. Please stay with me. Welcome, welcome, welcome once more to the delay edition of Inside the Print Media. Today I am in studio with my co-presenter, and his name is Mohamed Vani Kani is my co-presenter on the delay edition of Inside the Print Media. Don't forget today is twice day, July 20th, 20th. 23 whatever you are doing keep pushing forward keep pressing ahead because there is always a light at the end of the tunnel so let me first tell you we have in studio the data observer newspaper we have the new down newspaper we have the front page africa newspaper and we will begin with with our international sources that is the abc the cnn and the bbc so for today we have important top stories trend within our country liberia i encourage you to get yourself a copy of the newspapers that are being sold for an affordable price so the newspapers are being sold for an affordable price you have some of them has been sold for 40 librarian dollars and some of them it's been sold for 50 librarian dollars. Get yourself a newspaper, be acquainted with the happenings within our country, the trending stories of what is happening within our country. We will bring the news to you, but you yourself need to fetch ahead in order to be well equipped with information concerning our country, Liberia. You are Focal TV. We are saying happy pre-independence day to you as we celebrate our country independence day. We are saying happy pre-independence day. May God bless our country, Liberia, as we go through this crucial time of the year because right after our independence, come October 10th, we will be facing an electoral process. So I'm saying stay peaceful and let's celebrate God's greatness within our land, Liberia. So Mohamed Fanny, can you please proceed with the headlines and the news in details as it relates to Daily Observer and the New Down newspaper? All right, so Karsh, thank you. And just to add up to what you have just said, good morning. So listen to us via our online page and our YouTube page on Facebook and that of YouTube. So 
one of the papers I have in my possession here is the Daily Observer newspaper. The story here on the front page, I mean, sorry, the Daily Observer newspaper here is, we are makes a man after another code of conduct blunder. We are makes a man after another code of conduct blunder. And in detail of this story on the paper here is, after what many consider a blatant violation of the National Code of Conduct, which bars appointed officials from engaging in political campaign activities such as election, the executive Marshall has announced that President George Manoweer has given the Labour Marathon Commissioner Len Yuchin Nanwe a leave of absence. The president's decision came the president decision comes barely four days after the appointment, after the appointed, after he appointed Nango to the chair to chair their coalition for democratic change campaign team, with a mandate of ensuring that a second term is secure at the pools in October of this year. The executive mansion said in a release on July 19 that the leave of absence will not will take effect on August 4, 2023, a day before the NEC's official campaign begins. While Commissioner Nambe is away, the Senior Deputy Commissioner of the Labour Marital Authority, Mr. Emmanuel N. Reeves, will administer the affairs of the institution as officer in charge. It said, However, President, we are named Nambe on Monday, July 17, at the conclusion of the ruling coalition's thank you rally in Monrovia. But but later did the president and his jubilant audience know that his action to appoint number was in violation of the National Code of Conduct, which prohibits presidential appointees from engaging in political activities. The president's appointment contravenes part five of the Code of Conduct, especially section 5.1 and section 5.2, and there are captured under political participation. 5.1 of the Code of Conduct states, all officials appointed by the President of the Republic of Liberia shall not engage in political activities, canvass, or contest for elected offices. Section B, young government facility of partisans or political parties. C, self on campaign team of any political party or the campaign of any independent candidate. We move to section 5.2 of the Code of Conduct. Section 5.2 says of the amended Code of Conduct that states that all officials appointed by the president, including all cabinet ministers, deputy and assistant ministers, ambassadors, ministers, councillors, superintendents of counties and other government officials, both military and civilian appointed by the president pursuant of Article 56A of the 1986 Constitution and any managing director, deputy managing director, assistant managing director of a corporation owned by the governor of Liberia and commissioner, deputy and assistant commissioner of any commission established by the legislature and any official of government who negotiates and executes contracts, pursue, pursue goods and services and or manages assets for and on behalf of the government of Liberia who desires to canvass or contest for an elected public office within the government of Liberia shall resign his or her position one year before the date on which the election for their post for which he or she intends to contest. Another story on the new dawn year said, U.S. does not give out anything for free, says U.S. Enterprise Officer. U.S., which is the United States, does not give out anything for free, says U.C. Enterprise Officer. Bernard Sheria, Private Enterprise Officer of the United States Agency for International Development, U.C., has informed the Liberian private sector that his country does not believe in him out to individuals or country instead in doing a policy of reciprocal of reciprocal giving and receiving. The U.S. does not give anything for free. He said, this is a win-win opportunity for both countries. He made these remarks on Tuesday, July 18, at a one-day sensitive 
sensitization workshop for economic operators on African growth and opportunity art and food safety art organized by ECOWAS in collaboration with UCN, the Labua Chambers of Commerce, or LCC. Shira stated that AGOA is a great opportunity for Labua and the United States to utilize such a trade agreement. The UC Private Enterprise Office believe that when Liberian businesses grow, the United States will benefit from high quality agricultural products. We lack palm oil, we lack other agricultural products and that come from Liberia. And when Liberia grows, it presents another market for United States business to trap into. Shara explained, and that and that tree of ideas, knowledge, physical growth, and technology between U.S. firms. According to him, the U.S. market wants big Liberian businesses to regulate the input of products that will be able to sell. This is really a winning opportunity that we all should take advantage of instead of exporting in raw from which value added proceeds processing. Just make sure that Liberians get a larger share of their products. Share urge Liberian businesses. He noted that if Liberia is not transitioned from substance, from subsistence farming to a commercial agriculture sector capable of international export, there really needs to be a policy, an effort, and a strategy to utilize AGO and focus on international exports because we have a policy environment and a national strategy to support this. Cheryl added that the AGO emphasizes value added products, and this is one thing that UCL would like to promote as well. Nothing that the United States government really wants to see more Liberians adding value to their products prior to export so that Liberian businesses can enjoy a larger share of the value of those products from themselves. He said, AGO has been around, and since then, many African countries have benefited lower free trade with the United States and many more parts of the world. Another story on the, on the New Dawn, NAMO launches Women Campaign Fellows Program for Elections. NAMO launches Women Campaign Fellows Program for Elections. NAMO Partner for Democratic development has launched a new program called Women Campaign Fellows in Liberia. The initiative which took place of July 14 is intended to contribute to the inclusive, credible, and peaceful conduct of the electoral process through active young women's civic engagement and enhancing political knowledge. It was held under the team increasing the number of women elected in the legislature by 2023. The program, which is being supported by the Embassy of Sweden in Liberia, is expected to run from July 15 to October 5. However, the program will also provide an opportunity for 25 young women who are alumni of the alumni of the Young Political Leadership School Africa and mentees of the Young Women Mentorship and Leadership Program to prioritize to particularize what they have learned on campaign planning grassroots organizing and advocacy during the electoral process to help female candidates win and ensure that women's participation counts. UN Women Country Representative Comfort Lampert, who launched the program, inspired the fellows to work towards getting a better result for women in the 2023 elections and to learn all they can from this experience. As we launched the Young Women Campaign Fellowship Program, let us recommit ourselves to the vision of a society where women's leadership is not only encouraged, but celebrated. Together, we can create a future where women's voices sharpen policies and where equal representation in politics is known, she said. She highlighted the important, the important role NAMO is playing in creating awareness through civic education, targeting young people, especially first-time voters, and sensitizing them on the importance of participating in election. And we followed, she further moved on that saying, I want to ask you to support each other because 
your success will come when you work as a team and when you support each other. When one of you is falling, surround yourself with the person, give advice and help that person up. She added, you can compete, but not at the expense of each other. Continue to see yourself as a team and go together. And I am sure that with the amazing corps of young leaders, Liberia's future is a show. Madame Lam Lamte used the occasion to express gratitude to the government of Sweden for supporting NAMO. She told NAMO that UN women is proud of the work that they have done together to expand the pool of capable women, especially capable young women who are ready and eager to participate in political life and vie for political and public leadership positions. Also speaking, the program director of NAMO Peace, T. Matia Bouyou, gave an overview of an overview at the launch of the first of its camp program in support of women's participation, government name and star women campaign fellowships. Wow. She emphasized that women's participation in government is crucial for achieving true democracy and inclusive decision-making processes. Mathia Bouyou highlighted the need to break down the barriers that hinder women from actively engaging in polit into politics and holding leadership positions. So, on the new down, another story is yes, Gonglo narrowly escapes mob. Gonglo narrowly escapes mob. He so, Councillor Down said Gunglo is the standard bearer for the Liberia People's Party. Victims, so let's read what, why Councillor Down Gunglo narrowly escapes more. So, this story says Victim Amos Cooper and Evelyn Lomas were hurt after unknown men disrupted the mass protest and threw stones on stage against the protesters. Others flee for their lives after that, after the chaos erupted. On Monday, July 17, 2023, Councilor Gonglo, a renowned Liberian human rights lawyer, called for a mass protest to be here Wednesday, July 19, 2023, against alleged corruption across the country. He called upon Liberians to turn out to make part in the anti corruption campaign under the team anti corruption campaign ACC. The protesters paraded from Ducal Hill to Arsenal Street before the protest was disrupted by a mob. The drama started at the time Councillor Gonglo was about to deliver his statement of mobilization on the campaign against corruption ahead of a crucial presidential and legislative election due this October. In Cuban President George Manuela is seeking re election against multiple opposition aspirants. Including the protest leader, Councillor Dion Zeb Gumlo, has been vocal in his stance against alleged rampant corruption in the real led government and has called for the prosecution of corrupt officials. Gumlo promises a corruption free Liberia if he is elected president. Anti corruption campaigners, Chairperson Jessica Angel Morris, delivering her statement to mark the parade, real Liberians to reject corrupt leaders in the upcoming presidential elections. She urged the United States to speedily investigate and provide evidence against alleged government officials. She named Nema County Senator Prince Joseph Fomon, Minister of State for Presidential Affairs, now Magili County Senator Aspire Natana Falo Magil, and former National Port Authority Managing Director, now River Sales Senator Aspire, Mr. Bill Tuawe, among others. She said they need to be prosecuted if a full and speedy investigation is done so that they can face the full weight of the law. Madam Morris promised a stronger but collective fight with end corruption and impunity in Liberia that has been hindering the growth and development of the nation. For his part, LPP Vice Senator Bearer Dr. Emmanuel K. Yakawolo condemned the act against his party's protest. He warned the government to desist from such acts which had the propensity to undermine the peace of this country. He said, despite the attack, the LPP, along with the anti corruption campaigners, will not relent. He furthermore went out to say, according to he furthermore went out to say, they will vigorously campaign to put an end to corruption in Liberia. 
he demanded a full investigation into the incident. Another story on, on this newspaper say plot to incriminate Jeremiah Kuhn. Plot to incriminate Kuhn. The Movement for Democracy and Reconstruction, or MDR, has accused the ruling coalition of democratic change of plotting to incriminate Senator Jeremiah Kuhn running mate to Ambassador Joseph Neymar Broca. Through a press conference Wednesday, 19 July 2023, MDR alleged that elements from the regime are planning to lay a corpse or dead body on Senator Kuhn's farm in Ganta, Nema County. Another way the release indicated that the plot is to lay a cop on Senator, on Senator Kuhn's premises along the Roberts Fee Highway. MDR alleged, alleged that the plan is to use cops against Senator Kuhn for same propaganda purposes that will incriminate him. The party said it is deeply troubled and concerned about, about such information that has allegedly gathered from reliable sources in the corridors of the ruling establishment. The Movement for, Demo for Democracy Reconstruction takes this revelation seriously and believes such campaign tactics and propaganda from the regime collaboration collaborators would be a clear sign of provocation and counterproductive to the Farmington Declaration that was signed a few months ago and clearly speaks to a violent free election. The release here, MDR warned that these acts will not be perfect, will not be provocative, but could also be a recipe for chaos and set the pace for a violent election. The front page Africa news. We have front page Africa in our possession. One of the stories on front page. So, so one of the stories on the front page Africa yeah, is gender minister highlights awareness on SGBV at Women Deliver Conference. So thank you, uh, co-presenter Mohamed Fanikane. Um, thank you for your aid during the delay edition of Inside Your Print Media since Tuesday. Um, we begin now from the front page Africa newspaper. The headlines read, Gender Minister highlights awareness on SGBV at Women Deliver Conference. Gender Minister highlights awareness on GBV at Women Deliver Conference. The news in details. The Liberian Minister of Gender, Children and Social Protection, Madam Wilhelmita Sedi Tar, spoke at this year Women Deliver Conference held in Kagila, Rwanda. She emphasized the importance of amplifying the voices of young people in advocating for the issues they face. During a panel discussion with other African women, Minister Tar quoted the motto of Liberian children, nothing for us without challenge. She highlighted the vocal nature of Liberian children and their eagerness to have their voices heard if given the opportunity. Regarding the reduction in sexual gender-based violence, SGBV, Minister Tar acknowledged the increased awareness in around SGBV, especially rape during the COVID-19 pandemic. She mentioned that President Weya acted by involving 10 ministers, including gender, finance, health, justice, and education to address the issue. As part of their efforts, the Ministry of Education ensure the presence of females guiding counselors in schools, providing a safe space for both boys and girls in cases. The Women Deliver Conference theme spaces Solidarity and Solutions is taking place from July 17 to 20. So July from July 17 to the 20th of July 2023. The conference is expected to bring together 6,000 people to Kigala with an additional 200,000 participants attending virtually. On the third day of the conference, girls from Mozambique, Rwanda, Uganda, the, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Niger share their concerns and call 
for actions at a women delivered site even hosted by the World Vision in Kigala, Rwanda. These young advocates each a champion for any violence against children and a change maker in their respective countries. They discuss issues such as harmful practices. We we'll now move forward to another headline under the front page African newspaper. The headlines Chief Zanzankawa to serve as this year's Independence Day orator. Chief Zanzankawa to serve as this year's Independence Day orator. The chairman of the National Council of Chiefs and the elders of the Republic of Liberia, Chief Zanzankawa, has been chosen as the national orator for the commemoration of Liberia's 176th Independence Celebration Anniversary. The announcement was made, was made by President, President George Manubia, who proclaimed Wednesday, July 26, 2023, as National Independence Day in a public holiday throughout the Republic. The official festive celebration held under the team, giving our people hope for a violence free, fair, transparent, inclusive, and credible election will take place in the city of Monrovia, Monserrado County. The highlight of the day will be an indoor program held at the Continental Memorial Pavilion on Asma Street, staring at 11 o'clock Mediterranean. Chief Zanzankawa will deliver the, the keynote address as, as the, the national, national orator. orator. President Ria, proclamation also calls, also calls upon, upon all citizens, citizens regardless of religious just need, to, to gather, gather in their, their respective places of worship across Liberia, especially in Monrovia on Friday, July 21st, and Sunday, July 23rd, 2023. This collective out of worship aims to offer gratitude and seek divine blessings for the nation and its people. The proclamation recognizes the blessings and miraculous deliverance Liberia has experienced as a nation and state and expresses gratitude for the nation's forefathers' brave decisions on July 26, 1847, when they declared Liberia a free, sovereign and independent state. The commemoration of Liberia Independence Day holds special significance this year as the countries prepare for upcoming elections. The chosen team reflects the nation's aspiration for a peaceful and transparent electoral process, emphasizing the importance of inclusive participation and credible outcomes. Shizanzankawa most as the national orator amplifies the message of unity, hope, and progress as Liberia celebrates its 176th year of independence. On this occasion, all government offices and business establishments will remain closed from 6 o'clock anti mediterranean to 6 o'clock post mediterranean That is from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m to allow citizens to participate fully in the festivals and reflect upon the nation's joining since its founding. The day serves as a reminder of Liberia's status as the first independent African Republic and the resilience of its people in the face of historical challenges and threats. This is how we close down on the local news in our country, Liberia. We take a short break, we will be right back. But before I leave you, let me first acknowledge all of our viewers. If you are watching us from the diaspora, we are saying thank you for watching us. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon due to your geographical location. If you are within Liberia, a pleasant good morning to you. This is Focal Online TV. We bring innovation to broadcasting Focal Online TV. It's located within the Topo Village community along the Japanese Highway. Our offices are open to negotiation for business deeds. We are open to you from Monday to Saturday for negotiation of business deeds. This particular um, delay edition of Inside the Print Media is being run from Monday to Friday 
from 10 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. Thanks for watching. I am here as your presenter on the daily edition of Inside of Green Media. And my name is Rekina Koreshpa. And I'm being co-assisted by my colleague as a co-presenter this morning. And his name is... Mohamed Vani Khan. Mohamed Vani is my co-presenter for the daily edition of Inside Your Print Media. This is how we take a short break. When we get back, we proceed with our international news. And our sources are ABC, CNN, and BBC. Stay with ABC. Welcome back again to Focal Online TV, where we bring innovation to broadcasting. Today is July 20, 2023, and I'm here with the daily edition of Inside the Print Media. For today's daily edition of Inside the Print Media, I am your presenter, Craig Fina Koreshpar, here with my co-presenter. Mohamed Fani Kane is my co-presenter. On the daily edition of Inside the Prince Media. So, if you are watching us, welcome back again to another phase of our news as it relates to our international news. So, our sources for today we have the ABC, we have CNN, and BBC. So, so stay with me as we get into the headlines and the news details. Mohamed Farah, can you please continue with the ABC news? Yeah, so one of the stories we were able to capture from the ABC news is. Two QA New Zealand construction sites shooting. Suspects also there released. Two people were killed after a government opened fire at a construction site in Auckland, New Zealand, and police said that the suspect shooter was also found there. New Zealand police said a police officer and four civilians were also injured during the shooting. New Zealand police assistant lieutenant Sunny Patel said in a statement. The police officer was transferred to a local hospital in critical condition, but he was but he was now stabilized. The four members of the body have had injuries ranging from one to two critical. The building around 7 22 a.m. local time. Thursday and the male suspect continued to shoot as he removed throughout the site, police said. Upon reaching the upper levels of building, the male has maintained himself within the elevator staff. Our staff have attempted to engage with him. The New Zealand police said in the statement, follow shoots were fired from the male and he was located at the sea a short time later. So that is it there for the ABC News. Thank you, Mohamed Fani That That is how we close on the ABC News. We now move over to the CNN News. The headlines. Massive blast at Russian depot in Crimea, 4,000 to flee. Massive blast at Russian depot in Crimea, 4,000 to flee. The news in details. A series of explosions rolled through a Russian ammunition storage facility in occupied Crimea on Wednesday, forcing thousands of residents of nearby areas to flee and prompting leaders there to, re to redirect traffic away from a local highway. Footage allows smoke and flames rolling over the site near Starkrim in Crimea, Karov, Pesky district, where blasts were heard for at six hours after the initial explosion. 
the head of Crimea Parliament, said that it could take two days to fully extinguish the blaze, according to Russian state media. The cause of the blast was or has not yet been confirmed. The Russian-backed leader of Crimea, Sergei Askonovo, said that a fire occurred at a military train ground. Askonovo said residents of four surrounding villages, more than 2,000 people were being evacuated. A series of explosions rolled through a Russian ammunition storage. And the cause of the blast has not yet been confirmed. The Russian back leader of Crimea, Sergei Lovnovo, said on Telegram that a fire occurred and 2,000 people were being evacuated. We now move over to the BBC News. India's outrage after, after two women paraded naked in violence hit states. India outbreak after two women in a radiant naked in violent hate state. So this is how we bring you to the details of the news in India. The police say they have opened a case of gang rape in arrest of men adding that others will be held soon. On Tuesday, the Moscow section of parliament was disrupted as lawmakers demanded a discussion on the issue. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also said the incident has shamed India and that no guilty will be spared. I assure the nation the law will take a course with all its might. What happened with the daughters, daughters of Manipur can never be forgiven. forgiven. He said, said finally, breaking his, his silence on Manipur more than two, two months after, after violence, violence began. The Supreme Court also expressed its concern over the assault. Chief Justice of India, Siwa Chanju, said the court was really disrupted over the video and asked the government to take action. This is how we close down on our new segment for today as it relates to our international sources, ABC, CNN, and BBC. And our local news here with our country, Liberia. This is how we close up. Now, if I can, can you, can you please highlight our top story? Looking at all of the trending issues within our country, a top story that um, brought, um, key informations or key key things you want to share with our viewers today and something that is trending that you feel needs to be addressed that you feel we need to talk about i, I saw your official look and i feel like there's something people else to talk about why do you always put you into the wall so if you don't want to talk about it i'll yeah. talk about it yeah so i think it's going to be this uh, for today you need to come out and then Maybe I'm a budget or I'm a oppose your your opinion. So um I I I watch. Why are you laughing? So the issue with um the president um giving the stand to our traditional leader, yeah. Zan Kawa, mm -hmm. to serve as an orator for this year, um Independence Day celebration, is something that um one would like to know why he did that. Why he gave? Why he gave Zanzangawa as a serve as an orator for this year? Um, independence in celebration. Um, I think people will look at it from a political perspective. You will see, oh, because election is just around the corner. Like yesterday, we were having eighty-four days, and yesterday we left. So for today we have eighty three days to go to the pool. So it is something good to look at the chief Sansan Kawa, all of the elders in the country where he is, we they hear for every one of them to look at them to take someone in that sector, somebody who people think that you know he is now qualified or maybe he's yeah. not competent, he's yeah. thankful dignitaries, international guests to buy the, the media message that's to go out of the public. So this is not the problem we see a lot of places people are really talking about him. Oh, God, we're going to be tired. 
he can have all the ideas and good sustainable from him. So why should the president make some kind of payment for Zanza Carl Sierra as an independent orator? Why you could not bring another president who is a firebrand? Why you couldn't look with the CDC? Why you couldn't look look with the opposition to Sarah or the government? Yes. To bring somebody who has shared, who has given thousands of people in the national people territory. Oh, you know, Sons of Power, when we are all in the astute, we have seen, we have had conversations with people who are even at the highest level, international people, local people, you have sat with them. So I think it is something that we should applaud Sons of Power for, maybe we should applaud the president for such, for such decision. It is about him, the constitution gave the right to appoint the rules of the government that he wants to appoint. That is the right that has been given to him by the United States Constitution. So I think it is something good, and we hope to get the best out of Tiza and Kawa in the policies of this one. So, um, serving as an orator being a day celebration, it comes along with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You have to address the nation fully. Because you have people watching from different dimensions. Yeah. So I feel, I'm not saying, I hope, um, this may is a tradition for me. I want to be very careful in how I put my message. But honestly speaking, let me be honest, I feel that the recognition from our president, for me, my own view is not, it's not really okay with me. I feel that she has been someone else. So just, I mean, so deliver the message well to the people. But then, I, 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 the president is our leader, and he should be very respectful of his So I'm hoping that um, my hopes are being high as it is so the chief orator for this celebration. I'm hoping that he can deliver the message to the Liberian people, even in our local vernacular, he can be able to say the right thing. And then another thing the president proclaimed, and when he was calling on all citizens regardless of religious creed, that was why he mentioned, and then he said that Friday, July 21st, yes, we should take our time to worship God, um, or worship God, or watch it at ends to offer gratitude, seeking divine blessings, you know, from of seeking divine blessings for the nation and its people. I feel it's a good is a good sign. I should congratulate my president, um, His Excellency, um, Dr. George Manuia, for this particular aspect that he included within our Independence Day celebration. We cannot celebrate this Independence Day without um Telling God, thank you. Yeah, like I stated yesterday, that we we should be grateful for a lot of things within our country, like you. That's part we have some other issues. We have a lot of issues, but I feel we have a lot to be grateful for as it relates to our country. We had peace. Let me tell you. Liberia can go up and down. When we don't have peace, all of these things we are doing, we will never have a, 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 a sense of sit here and be talking this yeah, that we are yeah, talking. Yeah, so yeah, we should yeah. be grateful to God. So regardless of our relationship, if we are Muslim, we should pray. We should give God the praise. We should worship God, thanking Him, giving Him gratitude, and seeking divine blessing. I, I feel this, this is something that I should thank my president for. Um, Dr. George Manimia. And he said that reaching from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on July 26th, all businesses, all government entities should be closed, should be shut down. May, may on, on yes. So, absolutely, there will be no selling that day. You know what I said? Go and buy your children clothes soon. When money not there, now we want to eat. But you have to respect the mandate of the president. I'm saying this to say, I have watched and I have noticed that even if there's a holiday in this country, you still see some 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 businesses open on the side. Mm -hmm. You still see people selling, which of course is very bad. So the president gave a mandate, and you are a citizen of the country, or or you are a citizen of like you, you have to respect the president sure, mandate. Sure. You have to respect the president mandate. So I'm just. Thing, I'm bringing this issue up, and it's my problem. And most of that, for the orator, you know the skill, 
Yes. In terms of speaking in the pulpit, yes. to be a person who is a public speaker, mm -hmm. or us, or who have done that, that before. Yes. Uh, that, that is something that we have to look for within that, that person. person. And, and then in the, in the message, message, we should also be able to avoid unity, hope, oh. and, and the, the progress that I've made. Has made whether he has been from Joseph and Jimmy Robert Tom or the George Bia time, you will have to add down some of the progress, even President Josh Martin we has made, and what he intended on doing within the next two, three, four months as he goes to the pool in this year. Yeah. So we will be looking for his Yeah, that's the exclusion. We don't mm -hmm. want anything that we contradict. Well, uh, the statement that should be given, you don't want it. So I feel, uh, honestly speaking, right, I feel this particular nomination, uh, I'm say nomination, recognition is not okay because to address people officially from different, 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 different nominations, yeah. like yeah. Watching, watching, international community watching. watching. And then let's not look down on him anyway, because someone will say we are looking down. Let's 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 hope for the best. Again, we don't want to say he did, he tried, he did, he was doing better next time. We don't want it. And I'm also encouraging the president. There are you in this culture who can serve as officer to us? Are you the one of the Are you? Are you who can speak? I'm not saying this because I'm telling you my right? But there are you who can speak? There are women. And, and, and there are others. There are other men who can speak to this, um, to this um, occasion or to these occasions. So we we encourage the president to at least let him try next time to like bring someone who will deliver the message as an orator. Yes, this man is a traditional man. Let's keep it at that level. She's not a traditional man. This is how we wrap it up. <laughs> See you. Thank you for watching. Yeah, I love you. Thanks for watching. Continue to share our lives. Please remember our offices are open. We are located within the Topo Village community. Our shows are open to be sponsored. If you feel that you have the financial aid to help us, we are open. The delay is inside District 13 and the women talk here. We are open to to business these our office are open to if you want to do a advertisement whatever you want we are open to that and remember relation to broadcasting thank you for watching today i am your presenter on the daily edition of inside the printing media and my name is greg finan college park greg finan college park and i'm here with my co-presenter his well, name is yeah my name is Mohamed Van this is how we wrap it up do not forget to keep pressing keep moving forward because there is always the light at the end of the tunnel thanks for watching i am your presenter on the delayed edition of inside the prince media greg fina saying have a blessed Thursday, and i love you <laughs>